we read from the scripture, for creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it. Now that doesn't sound very good. We kind of understand it. There's a lot more details that could go along with that. So the question to be asked, well, why is that? It's a very valid question. You know, why is that? Why is the world the way it is? What, what is this futility? How did it all come about? Why is there such futility? Why isn't the world a better place? Why, why can't the world be paradise? <laughs> there are a lot of questions you know, that, that people ask. Of course, the only answer that we have, of course, is that fallenness of humanity. The fallenness of humanity the complexity about how that all came about. So we come to know the reality, and the reality is simply this. Life has at times hardships. There's hardships and sacrifices. Sometimes we have to sacrifice a lot. We may sacrifice for family. We may sacrifice for what we want. We may sacrifice this, sacrifice that. Generally, it's sacrificing for others. But it really is a kind of a, a difficult thing at times to deal with. But then it says this, it says this in the, in, the, in the scripture today too. It says, we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, talking about us, we also groan, groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Boy, is that true? There we go. We got this futility. Then we go right into something else to put an element of hope in the midst of that futility. And that, that's the gift of faith that we have. And that's the reason why we're here today. Adoption means being cared about, adopted, cared for, recognized, valued. And then the redemption of our bodies but that's a big one because some of the hardships are because of our lack of physical health perfection. And we all know this as we grow older, as we face, you know, challenges. And this is all, of course, you know, part of the life process. But the promise that we will have something else glorified, the redemption of our bodies, connects immediately with eternity and the kingdom of heaven, which is being talked about in the scriptures today. And so anyway, so, so we really, in, in many ways, are in a process of waiting. We're waiting. And just think of all the times you had to wait. <laughs> You know, it's like you get a Kroger, right? And they got those, you got to do it yourself. You got to go to the computer. I hate that. I don't do it. I, I got a phobia for it. I look at that thing and I say, it's like, it's like an, that's an AI. It's not even a human being. You know, so what do I do? I go to where's this enormous line of people like me who don't want to do, be computerized. And you got to wait. Of course, the reward is you get your stuff. You got to pay for it. You know, kind of life is like that in the everyday experience. And so our waiting is part of our knowing that Jesus had come to usher in God's kingdom. Okay, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the finale. We're waiting for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And so we hear the word and understand it. We've heard the word, we understand it, or we wouldn't be here. If we didn't understand it or anything about faith, then we wouldn't be here. It wouldn't make any sense. And some people, I guess, in the world are like that. They, they don't hear and they don't understand. And so we have to give ourselves the benefit of hearing and understanding. And so we hear the word and understand it. That's why we're here. And then we hear this, our response. Our response kind of gets to the point. It says, the seed that falls on good ground, on good ground, 
will yield a fruitful harvest. We are that fruit. We have to see it that we we are that fruit. Again, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't practice the faith. We wouldn't put all our trust in Almighty God if, if we didn't have that sense that we're the fruit of the kingdom. The fruit of the kingdom. And so we know that we're not alone. We, we're not alone in this fruitfulness. And so we're here together today. We are here together along with Jesus in his real presence, who is always with us. He's always with us. And every trial, hardship, or whatever you want to talk about in terms of sacrifices, we always have to have that sense in the back of our mind that Jesus is with us, that not, not only the real presence of this sacrament, but the presence with us always. And not forgetting that. He is giving us grace day by day. He's giving us grace day by day to help us make his heavenly kingdom a reality. So we're part of that formation. We're part of that groaning. We're groaning in this world knowing that the kingdom that we're waiting for is going to come, but it's going to take time. It ain't going to happen right away. And that's the reality of, of humanity. And so when we realize that, that with Jesus, who is always with us, he is giving us grace day by day to help us make his heavenly kingdom a reality right here and now. Like right now. I mean, we only really have the present. I mean, we, we have the past and we, got, we project into the future. We are planning and everything. But when you think about it, every time we get up in the morning, man, all we got is right now, that day. It's kind of a sobering thought, really. And then there's this stuff. This is the stuff in terms of the reading today. And we don't like this stuff. Worldly anxiety. The desire for riches. Did you ever have a desire like that you would have a lot of money? <laughs> you know, that you would like be, well, let's at least be well off, okay? But it would be nice to be rich. I mean, how many times, it, you know, boy, it would be nice to be rich, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be pretty nice. You know, we, we speculate on this. And then there's the evil one. We can't forget that terrible being, the evil one. He's lurking around. He's sneaking around. He's like a snake. He's going to sneak up on you. You can hear his rattle if you listen. You know, so there's the evil one. And then there's tribulations. What's going to happen next? It's like Murphy's Law. The Irish have a Murphy's Law, but actually it's applicable to anybody. If there's anything that's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. <laughs> you know, there, there's the tribulations. And then, and for some persecution, there's some people being persecuted in the, for their faith in the world. There's just like, I've been reading lately about this this cardinal in China. They're going to put him in prison. I don't know what he did. He said something that they don't like. So they're going to put him in prison. So as a persecuted one of us, a Catholic cardinal. And there's many others too, some that we'll never know, really. And so are all within the world around us. It's all going on in the broad world around us. We can't grasp the whole world. We know a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but there's a lot of things going on in the world. There's some good things, of course, but then there's a lot of bad things too. And so this is what we can do. This is within our power, let's put it that way. We must count our blessings and thank God today for what good we have. Gratitude. Having gratitude, that pleases God. God thank you, Lord. Thank you, I got through another day. Thank you, Lord, everything went well. Thank you, Lord, for what good health I have. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for everything that helps me and guides me every day. Thank God I'm still alive. Thank God I have all that I need for the most part. And we thank God for that. And so, and also St. Louis, St. Louis the Ninth in the 13th century, he said this, give thanks frequently to God for all the benefits he has conferred on you that you may be worthy to receive more. <laughs> yeah, that's not greedy. No, we want as much grace from God as we can get. 
You know, I'm going to bring this up. There's a really stupid commercial. Really, it's not stupid. It's funny. I laugh at it every time. It's a law firm. And there's this woman named Mrs. Moore. And you've got to have seen this, right? And so all she says throughout the entire commercial is, Moore, look at the smile. Moore, they're putting like cheese on her spaghetti and it's like a pile high. Like they just, Moore, Moore, I can't. Who thinks of this stuff? Somebody gets paid to think for this stuff, right? So anyway, so the thing is, now that, you know, we don't want to do, do that. You know, we don't want to be greedy. But let's say this. We can say this little prayer. Lord, thank you for the grace you've given me. But I want more. <laughs> you know, like, and you keep doing that, you know. Lord, I know I would wish that would you give me an endless supply of grace. If you can do that, that's fine. But at this time, give me a little bit more. So that's kind of a kind of a prayer. Amen.